Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is March 20th, 2021, and this is the Flight Sim News. Once again, it's been kind of a quiet week when it comes to Flight Sim News. And uh, the past couple weeks, I've really only been doing them once a week because there really hasn't been that much to talk about. But this week, there's a bunch of interesting news that I thought you guys may enjoy. So here we go. First up is the Stormbirds. Uh, Shamrock15 has posted a few different articles that I found interesting. Uh, one is this uh, flight journal, first flight in the India Fox Teco T45C Goshawk. And it's a pretty nice article with a variety of screenshots detailing uh, the new military trainer that is going to be coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, I believe these guys are also doing some stuff for DCS, so it's going to be interesting to see where they go with some of this stuff. But um, this trainer looks really interesting, and I'm not usually the guy that's into trainers very much. I don't find a lot of use for them usually. However, this is one of the newest ones that I believe they're going to be using uh, in real life and being new modern technology I might actually find this useful uh, it looks really cool and uh, again I never liked the trainers that we had in DCS all that much but you know they really didn't seem like anything very impressive this little thing looks pretty freaking cool and uh, I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can head on over to the Stormbirds and check it out for yourself alrighty next up is War Thunder news. I kinda like this little post they made. It says we start the day with a patch. The game client should no longer vacuum GPU memory like a Labrador in front of a rotisserie chicken. Wow, there's a lot to think about, huh? So I guess the game was uh, leaking memory or something and they fixed it. I like the uh, image they got there of all the, uh, you know, civilian vehicles just kind of sitting around and uh, it should be a pretty large update from what I was looking at here especially if it fixes a memory leak like that uh, enduring confrontation and then miscellaneous uh, bugs in the objective issuing system have been fixed with carrier search and destruction tasks carrier respawn time after destruction has been increased from one to ten minutes the number of respawns has remained the same up to five uh, the carriers route has been corrected uh, some ground convoy routes have been corrected looks like a lot of little fixes and updates to one of the last big updates that they had made and then there's a list of miscellaneous and uh, again if they've fixed a bug that's going to eat up GPU memory, that's probably in the right direction for sure. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, and then the biggest news of the week is the weekend update newsletter. Dear fighter pilots, partners, and friends, and this is Eagle Dynamics, uh, today we're pleased to announce the early access features for the DCS Mosquito. The Mosquito will be optimized for multi-crew and will be the first two-manned twin-engine World War II aircraft in DCS world. Please take a look at the development screenshots, which we will in a second. The main weapon control system features for the DCS Mi-24P Hind have now been completed. We have also connected and finalized the interior and exterior sounds from engines, systems, and rotors. Pre-orders will soon be commencing, and we would like to share our ongoing tasks. And then they talk about plugging the awesome Zone 5 campaign by Reflected Simulations and uh, uh, Dave bio Baranek. Uh, then it goes on to talk about if you're interested in becoming a campaign creator, check out our forum for more details. And then as we scroll down, we see the mosquito. It says Mossy Early Access. Uh, and they're basically detailing what's going to be included in the early access launch of the mosquito. 
Uh, all systems and components have been modeled in excruciating detail and include the recent cooling system updates that were made to the P47D Thunderbolt. Early access features, high quality external 3D model, six degree of freedom fully clickable cockpit with latest visual effects. Uh, flight dynamics based on official reports, our own CFD research and pilot feedback, full fuel system and optional external tanks, full electrical system, full hydraulic and pneumatic system, and propeller feathering. Uh, the armament that will be included with the early access is the four British Browning 303 machine guns, four Hispano 20 millimeter guns, uh, 250 pound and 500 pound bombs in the bomb bay and under each wing. You know, a lot of people are really excited for this and I really wasn't at first, but it's looking to shape up pretty well here. And then they go on to talk about the damage model for the Mossy considers the internal wood structure of the airplane and uses each internal element of the aircraft, oil, air, hydraulic and cooling systems, engine throttle trim and the main air the airframe's main strength spars and stringers to calculate the visual damage. We are now able to consider all of these factors, which in turn enables us more accurately simulate damage to the airframe and the effects on the flight model. For example, damage to the wing skin will lead to a decrease in lift and cause more drag. Damage to the spar will cause strength reduction and potentially wing snap under certain strains. We look forward to sharing further progress. Please check out the development screenshots. And again, another shot. And then it goes on to say, features coming after early access, uh, rockets, radio units, uh, historical accurate navigation system for World War II aircraft, and controllable AI navigator radio operator. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, when the Mossy becomes available in early access, we will be considering feedback from the community and working on the next stages of development. MI-24P Hind Development Report. This is the one outside of the Apache and the Kiowa that I'm looking most forward to. Actually, any one of those three could drop tomorrow and I would buy it. Love helicopters. Uh, we're currently improving in-cockpit reflections using our new pre-calculated ray tracing technique. The enhancement will be deployed to other modules in the near future. That cockpit shot looks pretty freaking amazing. And here we have an external shot. It says, we are adjusting the sight line direction controls and missile guidance from the operator's seat. And then the next and last hind shot is the operator AI features are being tested and debugging is going smoothly. Come on, guys, get that thing out the door. I'm dying to get my hands on it. And then they go on to talk about the fantastic Zone 5 campaign from uh, Greg and Dave Bio Baranek there from Reflected Simulations and former Tomcat uh, Rio instructor, etc., etc. And that pretty much wraps up the weekly report from the guys over at Eagle Dynamics. So that's some fantastic news. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that hind. And you know what? The more I look at the mosquito, the more I'm kind of like maybe I would buy that. We'll have to see. Depends on how much it's going to be at early access. If they have a decent discount on it, I think I might jump in and check it out. Something different, that's for sure. As usual, I will throw a link to this in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. And uh, the screenshots that they were talking about are here over in the screenshot section over at the Eagle Dynamics digitalcombatsimulator.com website. And here are those screenshots a little more up close. Wow, that looks good, especially with those new clouds. I have fond memories of the old digital integration hind in Apache Sims. So this should be really, really interesting. Look at that, man. Holy crap, is that amazing. Then we got the mosquito. A couple of mosquitoes. 
mosquito, and then clouds. Curious as to when this big update's going to happen, but it is the 20th already, and they did promise that uh, by the end of March they would get out that new update that has the clouds in it. Um, it's getting closer. So maybe by next week's Flight Sim News, we will have more information on that topic. Again, I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, last up is just a big update for the changelog for Team Fusion Simulations uh, Desert Wings to Brook. And it goes on to talk about Patch 18 changelog announcement. Hi all, hope everything is staying safe and well. Uh, TFS continue to work on improving your flight sim experience. Patch 18 has something for all players. Uh, single player improvements and new skins now available. We hope you enjoy the improvements in this update. And then it is a very long change log. And I'm not even going to go in here and try to read it all. I'm just going to kind of go over some of the things that kind of stick out to me. It looks like Hurricane, including late versions and tropical models, had overheat schedules revisited. Uh, a new Battle of France mission, the Battle of Somme, has been added. It has five playable flights. Uh, scenery added and fixed to the Skega airfields in the Desert Hawks campaign. Uh, briefings revised with more accurate information. Uh, and then they have a breakdown of missions for the Desert Hawks campaign and so on. Uh, the skins used in the Desert Hawks, Eagles of Tabrik, and I can't pronounce the last one, campaigns have been updated for historical accuracy and variety, and slides have been updated to match. Playable squadrons in the missions, Attack of the Eagles and the uh, Canal Kampf, have been altered for historical accuracy. Uh, the speed of the playable Stuka flights where the player is not the flight leader have been amended to make it easier for the player to keep up. Uh, briefings of all Stuka flights have been similarly amended with the proper speed. Uh, new slides added for the Mission Christmas Convoy. Uh, briefings for the Mission Christmas Convoy amended with the proper name for 804 NAS, uh, etc., etc. Like, this is a huge change log. And then a very nice image at the end there. It's nice to see that these guys have been at it since day one with Desert Wings to Brook. You know, I've seen a lot of people be a little overly critical of this. And even myself at times I look at it and the user interface is terrible because it's based on that old code from the older Stormavix series. But the simulation itself is solid. Uh, the fun factor is fantastic. Um, again, I, I think these guys are doing a fantastic job and, you know, they're definitely going out on a limb to you know, make this and create something that nobody else is really doing right now, especially to have that theater to to fly over and partake in missions. So, I don't know, man. I, I think Desert Wings Tobruk is probably one of the best simulations released in the past year, and uh, it's definitely worth the price of admission. If you haven't flown it and you haven't checked it out, just the sheer number of aircraft that you get. Uh, and all the variations underneath of those are just astounding. And uh, if you are interested in World War II uh, simulations in general, I don't know how you can overlook Isle 2 Stormovic Desert Wings to Brook. It really is that good. So that is it for the Flight Sim News for this week. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have a little bit more to talk about. So that's it for the Flight Sim News. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button, and until next time, guys.